them to begin to change and to heal. And, and uh, we've made scientific history over and over again. Have fun. Over 80% of people that are in a depression study uh, that are given a placebo, that's four out of five people, respond to the placebo as well as they do to the antidepressant. Now, that means then that if a person, when they do a brain scan on them before the study and a brain scan after the study, and there are physical changes in their brain just by taking a placebo, it means they're making their own pharmacy of antidepressants by thought alone. The people who, who, who were interviewed after the randomized study they, that got better from the placebo couldn't believe that they were given a sugar pill and that their depression healed. They, they in fact healed by thought alone. I think the greatest example of the nocebo is the story that I start out with in the book where a man goes to the doctor, isn't feeling well, is diagnosed with cancer. Uh, the doctor tells him, we actually interviewed the doctor. Uh, he told the patient that he had a terminal cancer and that he had a very short amount of time to live. And the patient said, well, just I just want to live through Christmas. And after Christmas, I, I really don't care. I just want to spend time with my family. And so uh, on New Year's Day, one week after Christmas, he dies. Uh, when they do an autopsy on his body, he never had the cancer that could kill him. I mean, he healed, uh, he died by thought alone. And when you think about dying by thought alone, it makes you wonder what you believe in. And, uh, and so I think that that's a strong example, but uh, you can give someone a, uh, a sugar pill and tell them uh, that it's a certain drug. And uh, when they take the drug, they get the side effects <laughs> of that drug because some people anticipate a good outcome, consciously or subconsciously, and some people consciously or unconsciously expect a bad outcome. So when they expect that bad outcome, they begin to manufacture the very symptoms uh, of their own, of their own uh, belief. 50% uh, of every person that's diagnosed with cancer that are told that they're going to get nauseous after their first chemotherapy treatment, they get nauseous on the drive over to their first chemotherapy treatment, which means they're getting nauseous in anticipation of the event. Well, if 50% of the people can get nauseous on the drive to their first chemotherapy treatment, 50% of the people watching your show can get healthy on their drive away to, on their way to work. It's the, it's the same process. It's just teaching people how the mechanism works. So when I wrote placebo, I thought something really simple. If I understood the science behind how the placebo works, and there is a science behind it, People make their own dopamine by thought alone, their own antidepressants, their own morphines, and all these placebo studies. Well, Beecher was one of the first people in the Western world to show that uh, people can begin to manufacture their own morphine by thought alone. And Beecher was a uh, physician in World War II that uh, was on the front lines, and he ran out of uh, morphine to do his uh, surgical procedures. So between him and a few nurses, they, they conjured up a way to give the soldiers an injection of saline. It was nothing more than salt. And when they made it more of a ritual, where they told them that we have the drugs, here's what's going to help you, and they gave them the suggestion that they were going to get the real substance, uh, Beecher was able to perform all of his surgeries without any morphine and the soldiers reported very little pain during the process. So that sounds mysterious. It sounds like uh, it's impossible, uh, but it's in fact the truth. And when people begin to really wrap their mind around this, they, I, I begin to wonder how effective real medication is. Because maybe we're just conditioned into putting our faith and belief in something outside of us, and a pill is something that we associate with whatever condition we're trying to heal. They used to say that genes create disease. That was something that was stated in the turn of the century, but uh, uh, turn of the 19th century. And then all of a sudden science came along and said, uh, we lied. Genes don't create disease. It's the environment that signals the gene that creates disease. Less than 5% of the people on the planet are born with genetic conditions. 
The other 95 are created by lifestyle and behaviors. Think about it, two identical twins sharing the same exact genome. One dies at 55, the other one dies at 82. Same genome, different environmental experience. So all of a sudden now, if the environment signals the gene, and the end product of an experience in your environment is called an emotion. The next question is, can you signal the gene ahead of the environment? And the answer is absolutely yes. Our research shows then when people begin to embrace an emotion and have a clear intention, they're beginning to change their brain and body to no longer live in the past, but all of a sudden begin to live in a new future. It takes practice to keep emotionally cultivating elevated states that finally it becomes a habit or a skill. So what does that mean that to the average person? A person has a trauma or a shock. A person has a betrayal in their life. Uh, they lose a loved one. Uh, they get uh, someone steals from them. Uh, as, uh, their, their, their partner leaves them. Uh, that event is a very strong experience emotionally and they're defined by that experience. So many of those events begin to signal the wrong genes in the wrong ways because the emotions of anger, of hostility, of uh, hatred, of uh, uh, aggression, of fear, of anxiety, of pain, suffering, guilt, shame, those are all created by the hormones of stress. Now it's a scientific fact that the long-term effects of the hormones of stress downregulate genes and begin to create disease. So every time the person thinks about the betrayal, the shock, they're producing the same chemistry in their brain and body as if the event was occurring. And they're firing and wiring the same circuits and emotionally conditioning the body into the past. So then that person then who's living by those same emotions keeps signaling the same gene. Now they're headed for some genetic destiny and in time they develop a condition. So then the fundamental question is what if a person begins to think differently? Firing and wiring, creating new circuitry. What if they begin to rehearse who they want to be that day? The act of rehearsing something mentally, when you're truly present, the brain doesn't know the difference between the outer experience and the inner experience, which means you begin to install the neurological hardware in your brain ahead of the event. Now your brain's no longer a record of the past, now it's a map to the future. So now you're priming your brain to behave exactly the way you wanted to behave because you're rehearsing it and it's no different than rehearsing lines in a play. If you go to a play and you're an actor and you haven't rehearsed your lines and reviewed them in your mind, you're not going to be able to demonstrate that character. But by rehearsing that, that activity in your mind, rehearsing who you're going to be, that hardware ultimately becomes a software program, which means you're going to start to naturally behave that way. And yes, when our students begin to understand that when they embrace an elevated emotion, that they're signaling the gene ahead of the environment, they assign more meaning to doing it. So the act of going from their old self to the new self does something really magical. The person starts to heal by thought alone. All of a sudden, they're in a new state of being. And the disease, the condition, existed in the old person and they're literally someone else and it's no different than a person with a multiple personality disorder that has an allergy to nylon stockings in one personality and type 2 diabetes in another and healthy in another personality it's the same exact thing when a person really overcomes themselves and they begin to express a new biology that they can say I'm not that person any longer that disease that I had existed in the old person I'm literally someone else